What's up, everybody? It's George Gabriel, and this is part two of You Are Using Logic All Wrong. In part one, we discussed that you're using logic wrong in the way that you're starting to use logic by using the templates that have the can instruments and the things that logic has decided for you to use that you may not want to use. And instead, I showed you different ways that you can just add software instruments and audio tracks that are blank and that are set up to go to a bus so you're better prepared just to move forward with a nice clean slate and put what you want on it. The big issue is that you still haven't de-garage bandized logic yet. So now let's look at how you can de-garage bandize logic and get you the most real estate so you have plenty of room for your tracks so you can compose what you want to compose. So now you have everything the way you want it and it's all kind of lined up. You got your audio tracks, got your software instrument tracks. This brings me to point two of why you're using logic wrong and that is because you have yet to de-garage bandize logic. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now GarageBand has things like this nice volume knob up top and these volume knobs on the uh, tracks and the pans on the track. Now you might say like, oh yeah, that's great. I can just adjust my volume here. That's not how we do it in a studio. If you're in a studio, you're going to have a fader on a board and guess what? Those faders are down here in the corner. Oh, here's the fader. Well, why do I need a fader here and here? You don't. That's the point. The name of the game in Logic is to try to have enough real estate. So some of the things that are prohibiting you from having real estate is this garage band effect. So the first thing I do is go in, right click, go to my track header components, and I get rid of that volume and I get rid of that pan. And you're going, wait a minute, man, I really like the volume in the pan. You can have the volume in the pan right here where it belongs on the fader, on the channel strip. That's where you want the volume in the pan, not on your track. Because if I add those things back, I just want you to take a look at the bar count, right? We got 32 bars, right? I add those things back to this equation here. Wow, I have only 29 bars. I have just lost three bars of real estate. Bummer. This is why you do not want to have these things on your track because you have them right down here in the corner. That's what they're there for. Get rid of them. Next thing is this master volume up here. This is very misleading because people think, oh yeah, look, this, I'll just use the whole volume here. No, you leave your master volume at zero. How do we get rid of this? We right click this and we customize this and we go into this and say, go away, master volume. You are not welcome here. It is a temptation that people do and they're like, well, I just want it louder. And then all of a sudden everything, their gain structure is all wrong. Everything is in the red. And now you're wondering, why does my mix sound so bad? That's why, because you're using that volume knob as a tool. So if you want to adjust the overall volume, there's other ways to do it. If we bring up our little mixer here, it's the stereo out is where you want to go. But frankly, I don't ever touch my stereo out or my master. I always leave those at zero. And there's a reason why it's gain structure. So don't even mess with it. Let's get rid of this. So the other thing that you don't realize you're doing is the dock. Now the dock seems like a convenient thing. This is a really pet peeve of mine. I always go into my dock and I automatically hide the dock. Oh wow, look, I can have more tracks. The name of the game in this thing is more real estate. So I can go all the way down here. Ooh, look at that. The other thing you don't realize maybe is that this thing, you wanna have this as tight as possible. Wow, now I've got 33 bars. I've gone from 27 to 33 bars just by getting rid of the junk, the garage band junk in this. So that's what you want to try to do is get rid of that junk, get more real estate. And now I've got this whole thing, six more bars. Woohoo! One other feature you might not be aware of, and I already have it activated in here, but Logic ships default. If you go to the settings and you'll see advanced here, it is off. Now you'll notice as soon as you turn it off, all of a sudden this garage band stuff comes back. But we don't want the garage band stuff because, hey, we're in logic now. We're no longer in the garage band. So we always enable the complete features. This allows you to customize it the way that you want. And it allows you to have freedom over what you're looking at. So just in a few steps, we've gotten six more bars of music. We have lengthened our tracks so we can get uh, more tracks on by getting rid of that dock. We've squeezed our tracks so we can even get more bars. And now we're ready to rock and roll. That is how you want to set this up. Now we've taken all this time just to get to the point right now where we can start recording. And what's going to happen next time is you're going to do this all over again. And that is why you want to have an auto load. And what an auto load is, 
is you set up logic exactly the way you want to. And we haven't even really got into a lot of the details here, but I'm just showing you some of the things you can do to improve your workflow. But if you save it as an auto load and you always go back to that, then it's essentially saving it like a template. And that way you don't have to do these maneuvers every time. You should check out my auto load video. In fact, I'm gonna show you my auto load right now so you can see what a proper auto load looks like. So this is my auto load. And you can see that this is pretty extensive. I've got my audio tracks up here. I've got my software instruments here and I have some multi timbral software instruments below. I have some preloaded drums on this side. I have uh, all my uh, mic pre's. So if I want to access them directly, I can. I have eight effects auxiliaries set up with some effects already in them. I have a couple side chain options and then I've got my stereo out and I have my master and you'll notice these are all at zero. But below I have all these things in buses. Buses are where you want to be. You want to be collecting all this stuff in buses. So I encourage you to check out my auto load video because that will show you exactly how you need to set this up. And you do it behind the scenes in an area that most people don't even know exists in Logic. So that's part two of you are using Logic all wrong. De-garagebandizing Logic. Check out part three, why you should never ever use library. And be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel by clicking the bell icon and come back for some more great music tips on George Gabriel Music. Yeah.